What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles back at you with another video. Today we're going to talk about the best products for treating reptile mites. I'm going to start this video off with a disclaimer that these are the products that I use, these are the products that I've been successful with if I ever have reptile mites and you need to use them properly. Make sure you read all the dis all the directions, all the warning labels, and you make your choices using your own educated decisions. Don't blame me if this kills your snakes. I've never killed a snake with this, so I'm gonna tell you how I do it, but at the same time, you need to use this stuff with caution and make sure that you're following the right directions. So, let's dive into the video. The first product that I think is absolutely magical when it comes to reptile mites is just the simple Dawn dish soap. Anytime I get a new reptile in, I've made this video, I think I call it aggressive mite treatment or aggressive uh, new animal treatment, but just this Dawn dish soap. They used to call it Dawn Original. I think they call it Dawn Ultra now. It's still the same product. It's just double concentrated, so you don't need as much. Now that stuff works wonders because what you do, anytime I get a new animal in, I will let them soak for about a half hour in some water they should not be swimming in this water. If the snake is an inch this, you know, this thick, put in a centimeter or half an inch of water. I'll let it soak for a half hour. I'll put a little bit of this in. I don't measure it out. I just put a little, you know, dab in there, swish the water around with my hand, get some bubbles on it, and I let them be. What happens with this is the dawn will break the surface tension of the water, so reptile mites basically fall to the, fall to the ground and die. They can't survive, and then every, you know, few hours or so, maybe every you know six hours, I'll go in, I'll splash the top of the animal, I'll wipe the animal down, again, make sure my hands are nice and clean, and then I will put that animal back in the water. Every about 24 hours, I will change the water and I'll repeat. Now this animal will stay in water for probably three to four days. The purpose of this is that it breaks the life cycle of the mite. The mite eggs generally take somewhere between three to five days to hatch. If there's any mites underneath the scales of the animals, those will generally die. They don't die by sitting in water, but as they hatch, they die. Now, mite eggs are also temperature dependent. If it's a larger snake, a, you know, an older animal, I might keep that animal in the water for about five days. Again, this is species dependent. Boas, pythons, for the most part, even most colubrids will do fine in the water. Again, they should not be swimming. They should just be sitting in the water. Now, that's something that I do every animal I get in no matter what. I don't care who it comes from. It could come from my best friend or it could come from, you know, somebody I've never known before. It's just, that's that's what I do. Because realistically, the only things you're going to see, even in a quarantine for six, seven months, beyond the initial poops that are going to occur, are going to be mites. And typically, mites can spread disease. I don't know if it's ever been proven that they do, but my understanding is that mites can because there's potentially a blood-to-blood -blood transfer, just like ticks with humans. So I really like Dawn dish soap as that initial hard treatment, nothing's getting past it. My second line of defense, and this is a controversial one because a lot of people don't like these. It has some harsh chemicals in it, but that are these hot shot no pest strips. I'm going to kind of get this in on the camera. This is not a promotional video. I'm not sponsored. Use these with caution. Now, I do not cut them up. You'll see some people will say, take them out of the, out of the container and cut them up into pieces. Let me go grab one so I can show you what it looks like outside of the package itself. So this is a hot shot no pest strip. It has this yellow kind of piece in the middle, and then it has this white cage around it. A lot of people will say, cut open the cage or break open the cage, and then they cut this little yellow piece up. I don't find that necessary. I almost always have one or two of these just hanging around my room. I have never had mites since I've done that. And obviously I do my Dawn protocol. I've never had mites since I've done this. I don't know what it is. It, it, if you have arachnids around, I've heard be careful with that because it could damage them and kill them. But for the most part, my snakes have never had issues. I've never had mites and it's been fairly uh, easy to do. Again, you just leave them around. Now, if you have an active mite problem, just putting one of these simply in the rack is going to help. Uh, don't put it in the cage with them. Do not do not put this whole thing, especially a fresh one, right in the rack. Put it on top of the rack, at the bottom of the rack, in you know next to the cage, whatever it is, but don't put it you know, actually in the bin. I think that that could potentially overload their neurological system. And then another caveat is, I know I said this is not good for you know, or this is okay for your reptiles. It's, I don't know how it is for humans. I don't know if I would, would necessarily sit in a room with this 24 hours a day. So if this is in your bedroom, if you have your snakes in your bedroom, maybe avoid these and go for the next thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, again, I, 
it, snakes are different. They're programmed differently than people. And this can probably cause some issues for people. My last one that I'm gonna talk about, which I think is probably the absolute best product on the market, is this reptile spray. It's made by Na Natural Chemistry. I usually buy it by the gallon. This gallon's pretty damn old. I don't think it expires, but um, I've, I just always have it on hand because when you need it is when the mites show up. So I always have a bottle of this on hand. It works amazing. I mean, if you have a snake with active mites, and I used to do some type of a small rescue. It wasn't an official rescue, but it was a rescue for animals. And I would get animals that were covered in mites. The combination of these three totally eradicated them within a week. But, you know, the Dawn dish soap and water taking care of 95% of them. This taking care of anything that may have escaped. And this taking care of anything that's going to hatch. And what you do with this is you spray it directly on the animal, at least for a snake. You spray this stuff directly directly on the animal that comes in a smaller spray bottle as well so you don't need to buy a gallon uh, if you have uh, hundreds of snakes like I do buy the gallon you'll you'll use it and it, it I don't think it goes bad I don't know what the active chemical is in here it says something like uh, something I can't pronounce sodium something I'm gonna I could probably pronounce it if I really tried but but not on camera here I'm gonna try to zoom in so you can see the active chemicals but that's it you know look it up online it's it's fairly inexpensive in the big picture of things I think a gallon, at least it used to cost about $30 with inflation and all this other stuff. It's probably around $50, but it's worth it. It's so worth it. Now, I like this better than like Nick's treatment or stuff like that. One caveat I will say with this is if you're using the spray, spray the animal, pull the water bowl. Uh, I can, you can spray this right on the bedding as well. So if you have issues with bedding, you're going to spray it on the bedding. Just kind of kill anything that's in there, dump your bedding. That way, as you're dumping your bedding, there aren't mites falling on the ground and you're losing them and they're spreading to other things. But I like to spray this on the bedding, spray it in the animal. And if you actually just take a mite and put it in there, it's just like totally frozen. It's some amazing stuff. It just, I don't know what it does to them, if it eats away at their exoskeleton or whatever, it works. And I don't really care what it does to make it work, it just works really well. Again, why I do not usually recommend NYX or Frontline or other things like that. I know people have success with it, but I've heard so many horror stories of people's snakes dying because they mixed up the ratio wrong and they did things differently. I just use this. There's other chemicals like permethrin that I have used in the past. I don't like it because it's a really fine line between killing your animal and killing the mite. And you almost have to push it right to the brink of killing the animal before you actually kill the mite. And that's where I don't like. This, and this I've never had issues. I've never lost a snake. I've never killed a snake with any of these treatments. I've never neurologically screwed them up. Another one that's commonly recommended, I don't feel like it works at all anymore, is Preventamite. People will call it PAM. It used to be great, but since something changed years ago, uh, I do think it's still semi-effective but it's not as good as some of these products. And I've also seen so many animals messed up from Preventamite, even when they let the snake just kind of sit or they let the cage sit, then they put it back. I just tell people avoid Preventamite. It's just bad stuff. The fumes are bad for you. You're gonna be breathing in as you're spraying it. And I would just say avoid Preventamite as a whole. With all that said guys, I appreciate you watching and checking out this video. I wanted to do this mite video or this mite preventative video now, specifically around the breeding season because that's when animals are getting paired, stuff is moving around, keeping mites at bay right now is so critical or you're going to be spreading diseases everywhere. So you need to take the proper precautions, you need to know how to treat this stuff and now is also a time in the next six months is when a lot of imports will come in. When the imports come in you're going to see mites increase. So as you're taking chances, buying things at reptile shows, buying these things from people who have imported animals, you're going to be taking a risk of spreading mites to yourself and your collection and everything else. Even just picking stuff up at a reptile show they can hitchhike away home with you so i thought it was an applicable topic to this time of year i appreciate you guys watching and subscribing if you haven't done it already please please like share comment on this video pushes the channel if you're interested in learning more that one-on-one -on -one, check out my patreon patreon.com slash jason's exotic reptiles and if you're looking for a nice animal burmese pythons colubrids boas i got a little bit of everything up on the website right now make sure you check out my website jason's exotic reptiles uh, dot com and let's keep it moving. Thanks guys.